Welcome to your homeschool doula again. This is my mother-in-law, Sandra, with me today. She is awesome and let us stay with her for our ski school this month, and so I'm taking the opportunity to do an interview with her about her preschool program she used to run in her home. I'll let you her tell you a little bit more about herself, her background, and her preschool in her home. I taught preschool for 12 years and just loved it. Not every moment, but of course, I, I did love it. And um, the great thing about teaching preschoolers is their enthusiasm and the world is still fresh for them. And it can just be a lot of joy and fun if you approach it with a good attitude, with um, the idea that learning is fun and model that for your child and they will follow your lead. I love what you said about modeling the love for learning in your child. I know some of my friends and people I've talked to get overwhelmed with the thought of my preschooler isn't learning enough and I'm stressed about focusing on all the things I need to learn. But if you focus on the love of learning and the joy of experience, then it's a lot easier for you and your child. Exactly. And if you can take your ego out of it, how do I look as a parent if my child can't write all of their letters and my neighbor's child can, um, or if my child writes their name completely backwards, um, you should compliment them on being able to write your name and just don't pay attention to whether it's backwards. Um, and try and take the ego out of it and focus on, on your child. Each child will learn different things at a different pace. Um, letters might come easily for some, whereas others, um, no, they have no interest in, in even picking up a crayon and writing, but they might do great at puzzles. So if you can focus on what is working well for them, and then, um, in, in my opinion, it's good to have some seat time, um, where, but your expectations for timing for focus should be age appropriate. Uh, especially depending on the activity. Um, I think um, for three-year-olds, three to five minutes per activity is about all you can ask. Then you switch activities. You're not done learning, but you can switch activities. Mm -hmm. If you're working on letters, that's great. You can have snack time be all about letters and uh, see how many letters they can make with uh, stick pretzels. You can do spaghetti noodles or craft sticks. And that's very tactile, and it's, you're not asking them to sit and hold a pencil and write. And so that works better for some children, but it also just reinforces the whole thing. It's challenging for them because letters float in space. There's not that magic line that they have to sit, those letters have to sit on. Whereas, you know, for an adult, those letters have to sit on a line. They aren't floating in space. They're going to be much more creative about how letters, they'll be able to recognize letters maybe upside down as well. Where it's harder for us because we're so set in our mind that a letter sits on a line and that's how letters are. So don't get frustrated with if your child has no interest in letters. Take a different approach. You could do painting, finger painting. You can just do all sorts of games um, and make it fun. For instance, a game that you can play once they are working on their letters or to maybe interest them in what letters look like is to play musical chairs. Mm -hmm. uh, or you can put um, like the letters or the numbers on the floor. You just write them on an 8x10 piece of paper and tape them to the floor. can get a little slippery. <laughs> if you want to preserve them, you can put contact paper on them if you want to make them yourselves. And maybe the child could do a tracing page and then you use those pages as the letters on the floor. And then um, you play your music and stop it. And there's a treat for whoever is on a or whatever it is you're focusing on that day. You can do shapes, you can do colors that way. I love that. Or you could have the child, each child go around and say what letter they are standing on to involve all, all the children. If you have a big preschool, right. if you just have your one child or, or if you have a little co-op that you made with your homeschool mm -hmm. friends, you have your bunch of your little preschool friends together and they love to play and learn together. That age is so fun of their enthusiasm for learning and their joy of discovering. Um, you can also play uh, like a treasure hunt, uh, 
we spend plenty of time in the car and there are letters just about everywhere on cereal boxes and you know maybe while you're doing dishes they have a treasure hunt to find five a's Mm -hmm. in the house and they can show them to you it could be in a book it could be in the car it could be on people's shirts you can just make up whatever game applies to where you are and what you're doing my melina she always likes to play find a letter game on Mm -hmm. cereal boxes at breakfast so lucas my my second grader he will find hard to find words that are hard for him to read on the ingredients list and i'll have to find those ones and then Maylena, my kindergartner, she will find words that she can read. And I have to find that word on the back of the cereal box. Mm. And then Archer, my three-year-old, he wants to play too. So we find we play find the shape or find the color. Mm. That's great. Find something that he can Tailoring be involved game. with. Yeah. Yes, to each child. That's great. When you're learning, there's much more to focus on than just letters and numbers. Mm. Shapes, colors, patterns. And also you can just incorporate those in games that you play. If your kids like to play hide-and-go-seek, instead of counting to 10, count to 100 by 10s. Or count by 2s or 5s, and then when they get to multiples in their math, they're going to already know that, and that will be very easy for them. Rhyming games are also um, very helpful to kids to help with phonetics. And you can, as you're walking up the stairs and herding your kids up the stairs, make a poem, just a silly rhyming thing up about going, about up. Um, Mm. And, you know, pup is up and have them add to what you're saying. You can also work on memory games with numbers. You can give a child like three digits and have them repeat it back to you and so you're doing like one three seven and then the, your older kids you can get up to like a series of 11 numbers and they will be able to repeat it back hmm. if you work on it and build up that skill there are lots of games that um you can have to play with kids um, you can do letter tiles uh, alphabet bingo you can make your own bingo game and then you can also don't worry about letting the kids take over the game and make up their own rules, and um, that will have them be more invested. Mm. You could also do a, a bingo game with family pictures of family members and the letter um, that their name starts with. or And then you can switch and do the letter that their name ends with so that they start listening to what words end with not just begin with we at first we all often end you know apple you can also go around you know when you see animals or something duck um so that they start listening to sounds that make up words Mm -hmm. also um you can look for shapes anywhere on the ceiling the you know the lights the light switches all of those things when you play, you know, I Spy with My Little Eye, um, you could do shapes instead of I Spy Something Red. You can play I Spy a Rectangle. Mm-hmm. And uh, just be imaginative, creative. And oftentimes we get stuck on thinking that we're, you know, we've got to have those ABCs. Well, what about observation, skills of observation? You can have them focus on what they can hear mm-hmm. and close their eyes and what can they hear. You could ask them to look for insects when you're outside or not just to step on them, but <laughs> <laughs> counting legs on insects mm-hmm. or just um, noticing color variations. Is a turkey, is a wild turkey just brown? Or is there a lot of variation in that animal? And you can include all sorts of animals that kids are interested in. And uh, another thing you can focus on is music and rhythm. Uh, it, it's, that can be an incredibly difficult thing. But drumming is so fun and so engaging. And, you know, maybe at first if you're drumming, the hard part that kids need to learn is the beginning to every song is quiet. <laughs> 
And, you know, maybe you're so simple in what your rhythm is, is down, down, and then you put your hand on your head <laughs> so that everybody stops at the same place. And so that also is patterning. Um, and you're teaching, you know, it, yes, it's music, but that also plays into math and mm -hmm. um, all sorts of things. And you don't need a drum to drum. You can use your lap. You can use your hands to clap. Yes, that's right. You can slap your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Well, you can just do bowls or pots or mm -hmm. um, an empty milk jug. Mm, what, like yeah, idea. whatever works. And if you have rhythm stick. Another great thing to add into your learning is dancing mm -hmm. or movement. We often associate things with where we are um, or a certain way we're moving. Um, some kids learn better, you know, they might go through ABCs, have them jump for each letter. Uh, we need to, we need to harness that energy mm -hmm. and get their brains going at the same time. It doesn't have to be exclusive. Again, I do think, you know, asking them to sit for three minutes and when, and if you also set a rhythm so that they know after we do this, we're going to be singing. Mm -hmm. And so there will be something, some movement or some favorite part. One thing I noticed um, a lot was since kids do learn differently and they learn at a different rate, that some kids who uh, were slower in learning their letters were way advanced in puzzles or being mm -hmm. able to do patterns. You can do color patterns, like you can get those frogs on a log, you can make necklaces, you can do beads. It's not asking too much to have them follow a pattern. And that fine finger work of getting the bead onto the yarn or whatever mm -hmm. you're doing, that is developing finger muscles for later holding pencils and writing. Mm -hmm. And you can also point out when you're at the store or something, you can ask, so what kind of pattern is in that necklace. I see they went red, blue, red, blue. We call that an AB pattern. Mm -hmm. um, it, and so you can ask them to look for patterns and have them notice things. There are just so many games and things you can do to interest your child in the world around them. You can um, have them count the red cars that you pass on the way to Walmart or whatever mm -hmm. that will increase their observation and just make them more interested in the world around them. This all sounds very doable and like you're living life with your children and involving them with stuff that is going around them in real life. Do you feel like someone would need to have a, an official textbook or curriculum for a preschooler or is it sufficient to make your own out of what we've talked about today? I think you can certainly make your own. The structure for my preschool was every month we would study a different country. We would learn to say hello and thank you in that language, and we would learn a little bit about what families in that country do and look like, how their world functions. Do they, when their family goes somewhere, are all five of them on a little scooter <laughs> um you know everywhere in the world is different and how what does their house look like there are plenty of videos available like that um we also would focus um stories we would read stories by authors from that country and we would focus on a famous artist from that country so when we did mexico we would do diego rivera and his big murals um there's just so much to focus on so like rich cultural things, you can listen to the music and of course dance to the music and, and learn about instruments that are popular in that country. Mm -hmm. Also, um, for each month we would focus on maybe a holiday, of course, some are easier than others. And we would focus on stories from, from, from that holiday. So in December, uh, we would read I would find maybe five different stories on the gingerbread man. Mm. And there are some really fun ones out now that uh, are about the gingerbread girl. And so what you can do is when your kids are little and you're reading to them, stop and ask questions. What do you think is going to happen next? 
oh, what is little bear feeling? Look at his face. And that way we learn empathy from our mm -hmm. reading. And also, um, after you read one story, or you can compare the movie that you've seen to that book and say, now what is the same? Mm -hmm. And then ask what is different. And so you can read, you know, maybe every day read a different version of the gingerbread man. You can make gingerbread cookies. There's just so much you can focus on on one thing and just have all that learning go around that topic and just enrich what you're learning, make it fun and just just really rich. Um, the more you dive deeper into a certain topic, Chinese New Year is a is a really fun thing mm -hmm. with the the dragons, and you can focus artwork on those things. There's a a website called Art Projects for Kids, I think it is. I'll link it down below. And that's really great because on one page they give you the drawing how how you start with one thing they give you the steps to draw whatever it is you're working on she and also, only like six steps total. yes so it's very accessible for the youngest kids yes and she tailors things um from pre-k on up to sixth grade i think and so there's, there should be something for just about everyone in your art world and that takes the pressure off you of mm -hmm. trying to figure out okay how do i simplify this for everybody's age that we're working with yeah. well thank you so much for all those amazing ideas and options i love that i i was taking notes in my head mentally about oh, i'm going to do that with my kids more than i have or i forgot about that doing that with my kids so thanks for being such an awesome resource for me and for all of you guys feel the joy that's right school homeschooling your preschooler especially is all about the joy of learning and the joy of discovery so t tell us below what your favorite tip was or what your favorite thing is that you do with your preschoolers. And we'll see you next week at your homeschool zoo life.